So Apgar scoring, probably one of the biggest topics with uh, newborn and OBGYN. So let's go into what an Apgar is and how we assess your little baby. Now Apgar helps us to do a fast head to toe assessment on your newborn babies. So let's just say you get a test question. The RN is, is assessing a newborn who has a heart rate of 198, a strong cry, who resists staff when touched, and has blue hands and feet. Now, you as the nurse have to classify those into these categories. It's like a scoring chart, and we're going to go through exactly what APGAR means and how we classify a newborn baby. So just like everything else, there's a good, medium, and then a bad, like a small, medium, large problem. So for APGAR itself, we have appearance, how does the baby look, we have pulse, we have activity, as well as respiratory rate. Now we can only score a maximum of two in each category, that means you're, the higher the score the better. You can only score a maximum of ten points, but let's go through each one here. So for appearance, if you have a blue core, anytime you guys think blue, Blue, you have to think low oxygen, low oxygen, a.k.a. cyanotic, cyanosis. That's not good. If, if you guys remember any of my lectures, oxygen is the uh, money of the body. So a blue core, not good. Blue arms and legs, blue arms and extremities, that's okay. That's better because a lot of the blood needs time to circulate throughout the extremities. All your core vital organs are right here. If your baby is pink, you want your babies to be pink. That is a two. So our baby can score a two. On our next one, our pulse. If there's zero pulse, it's not a good sign, guys. Um, if it's less than 100, they score a one. If it's greater than 100, it doesn't even matter if it's in the 200s. We don't really classify APGAR uh, greater than, you know, tachycardia or whatever. We just say greater than 100. That's normal. So in our question here, we're assessing a newborn with a 198 pulse. That's great. They get a score of 2. Next is our grimace. Is your patient moving? Does your patient cry automatically and pull away? Because it's normal for when you stimulate a newborn, they're going to pull away and retract or extend or even move. If they're not doing any of that naturally, we're going to stimulate them. And if they cry with stimuli, that's a one. Normal babies usually need some stimulation in order to cry. Some really active babies cry and pull away automatically. But about uh, six times out of ten, you're going to get a crying baby with stimuli. You're going to have to rub their feet, rub their back, and then they'll cry for you. For your activity, a zero, not good. Anything in the zero category, guys, is not good. And we're going to talk about exactly what we do when we classify our good, kind of okay, and then you better rush to the uh, crash cart because your baby is going down. So we're going to get to that. But for your activity, zero is not good, obviously. Number one is minor flexion. Minor flexion. They're going to flex with minor. It's not going to be a full-on flexion extension. Your baby's not going to be moving around that much. It's going to be kind of sluggish. And the more you see newborn babies inside your clinical rotation, easier it's going to be for you guys. So don't worry if it's kind of, oh, is that, you know, at too active? Is that underactive? You'll know. So for flexion and extension, your baby's going crazy. It's like a normal baby. So the baby's moving without having to imply stimulus. Respiratory rate. Does your baby have a strong cry? Is it, ah, is it a strong cry? Or is it more of a weak cry? Uh, or even weak, irregular gasps? <gasps> if it is, you probably need a suction with the weak, irregular gasps. 
And you have to do like even deep suction into the baby's mouth all the way down because they might have aspirated some of the amniotic fluid inside that, um, that uterus when they're coming out and the water's breaking. Definitely we want to suck out any type of um, amniotic fluid or if they um, had defecated inside the uterus, meconium staining. Big, big problem for um, brain damage. So uh, we're going to be suctioning out their mouth. So a strong cry, it's a good thing. So how do you know if your baby's bad? How do you know if your baby's good? Or how do you know if your baby is doing okay? Well, if you get a score of a 10 to 7 here, you're going to be happy. Normal babies do not score 10s. I mean, I shouldn't say normal, but about 8 is average. 8 is in terms of like, you know, that's the average for your APGAR scoring. 6 to 4, the baby's doing okay. Um, definitely going to monitor them. If they score less than a 7, we're going to do the APGAR scoring right after birth, like we always do. But then we're going to do it five minutes after birth and see if they bump up into this level. If we do not get a better scoring after five minutes, we're going to have to do it in another five minutes to see if it's going down or if your baby's getting better. Now, if it's a three, we're doing it one minute after birth, guys. If it's a three, we are going to call the doctor, get the crash cart, get more people because that baby is going down. And that might be a test question. Your baby comes out, you're assessing them. They have an APGAR scoring of three. What is the first nursing intervention? You call for help. You call for the doctor. You call a crash cart. Okay? What's the first nursing intervention if your baby scores an eight? Warm them up. Because they're, they're good. They're fine. You don't have to reassess them. If your baby scores a five, reassess them in five minutes. If they score the same, probably going to reassess them in another five minutes. Because pediatrics, especially newborns, they go down very, very quick. If anything's wrong with your newborns, they usually spiral very, very quick. I've had a few patients um, that were a few months old, like nine months, came in breathing, a little pale, and uh, it would try to triage them in the triage room, and it didn't even take more than, I believe, less than 10 minutes, and the baby was already not breathing, not responsive. So babies go down very, very fast. So in terms of our question here, you're the RN who is assessing the newborn who has a heart rate of 198. Fantastic. It's greater than 100. 198, that's great. You have a strong cry here. Strong cry, cool. That's a total of two, four. We have four points so far. Your baby resists staff when touched. Resisting the staff when touched. Cry with stimuli, pull away, cool. So that's six there. And it has blue hands and feet. Blue hands and feet. Let's see here. Is able to resist staff with flexion. So we'll do flexion and extension here. So it's going to be a 2, 4, 6, 8, and 1 would be a 9 on our APGAR scoring. So that's how we score APGARs, guys. And remember, this is done one minute after birth. If we get a bad reading, we're going to do it again in five minutes. And we're going to do it every five minutes to monitor our patients. Once we score good, we're going to basically just monitor the patient as normal. But this would be a good one to write down like a little chart like this and carry it around with you, okay? So next one we're gonna do RH factors here.